Good morning. Um, Chairman Franks and distinguished members of the subcommittee, thank you for inviting me. My name is Anthony Levitino. I'm a board-certified obstetrician gynecologist. I have served in both academic and uh, clinical settings. Currently, I practice in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Uh, I've been, a board, I've been uh, an obstetrician gynecologist for 33 years, and the early part of my career, I performed over 1,200 abortions, over 100 of them in the second trimester, up to 24 weeks of gestation. Imagine, if you can, that um, you're an obstetrician gynecologist and a pro-choice obstetrician gynecologist like I was, and your patient today is 17 years old. She's 24 weeks pregnant from last period. Her uterus is two finger breasts above her umbilicus. She's been feeling her baby kick for over a month. She's asleep on an operating room table, and you're there to help her with her problem. The first thing you do is uh, withdraw the laminaria that was placed in the cervix, the dilation uh, of the cervix that's required for a d &E abortion at that level takes at least 36 hours. Later abortions can, dilation of the cervix can necessitate almost three days of preparation prior to performance of the procedure. First thing you're going to reach is for a suction catheter. This is a 14 French suction catheter. It's about 9, 10 inches long. It's about, an in, about 3 quarters of an inch in diameter. And picture yourself, if you can, placing this through the cervix and instructing your circulating nurse to turn on the suction machine. What you'll see is pale yellow fluid running through this into the suction bottles of the machine. That was the amniotic fluid that was there to protect the baby. If this was a first trimester abortion, when her child would be that size or smaller, you could essentially do the entire abortion with this one instrument. A 24-week baby that we're describing here from last period is the length of your hand and a half again from head to rump, not counting the legs. Babies that size don't fit through catheters this size. When you're done, reach for a sofa clamp. This is one that I brought along so you could see what we're talking about. It's about 13 inches long. It's stainless steel. The business end on this clamp is about half inch wide and about two and a half inches long. And there are rows of sharp teeth on this instrument. It's a grasping instrument, and when it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. A second trimester abortion at that stage is a blind procedure. You can't really see anything. Everything has to be done by feel. Picture yourself, if you can, reaching in with this instrument and grasping blindly anything you can and pull hard. And when it finally pops free, out comes a leg that big, which you put down on the table next to you. And reach in with this again and grasp and pull hard. Out comes an arm about the same length, which you put down on the table next to you. And reach in with this instrument again and again and tear out the spine, the intestines, heart and lungs. Head of the baby about that age is maybe the size of a large plum. Again, the procedure is blind. You reach in, being per careful not to perforate the uterus, and you have a pretty good idea you have it if you have your clamp around something and your, arm, your fingers are spread about as far as they will go. You know you did it right if you crush down on the clamp and white material runs out of the cervix. That was the baby's brains. Then you can pull out skull pieces. If you had a day like I had a lot of days, sometimes a face comes back and stares back at you. Congratulations. You just successfully performed a second trimester d &E abortion. You just affirmed her right to choose. These procedures are brutal by their nature. In later abortions, when you are preparing that cervix for even more extended periods of time, you can have situations where you will get into preterm labor or even precipitous deliveries of these children. The Gosnell situation is a situation that has, I think, brought to the public's attention what we're talking about when we're talking about this level of abortion. It was mentioned earlier that um, the idea that abortion is not is, is needed for, to save women's lives is one that must be under consideration. As a faculty member at the Albany Medical College, I have treated hundreds of women with severe problems with their pregnancies, pregnancies that were life-threatening to them cardiac disease, diabetes, cancers, toxemia, elevated blood pressure in pregnancy. I'll illustrate with one case that I dealt with personally. A patient came in at 27 weeks of gestation. 
blood pressure 220 over 140. You know a normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. This woman is moments or hours away from a stroke. We stabilized her, delivered her. She had a healthy baby in the end and she did well as well. But I was able to stabilize and deliver her within an hour because that was required when you have a, an emergency of that magnitude. Abortion would be worthless in that situation. As I told you, at 27 weeks of gestation, it would have taken at least three days to even prepare her to be able to go through the procedure. And this is an important point when we talk about abortion in terms of saving women's lives. I appreciate your attention. I guess I'll just end, Chairman Franks quoted President Obama earlier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote him one more time. He said recently, if there is just one thing, one thing that we could do that would save just one child, don't we have an obligation to try? Thank you.